Hello everybody, this is Stringhammer back for round 4 of Group G. And this could be a pivotal round in this group with 6 of the teams currently sitting at 2-1 and one, and 2 of the teams currently winless. So, let's have a look at our fight card for this session, shall we? At first, we are going to see Shy Guy taking a crack at Futuristic. Then, we will have Drogon Targaryen III going up against Dino Tanker be an interesting uh, match. Then we'll see Ultra Lord taking on Windless p -Bar. And as for our main event of this session, an interesting one, we got Windless Pointless Moon going up against the Mad Lad. Two very, very similar teams, I should point out. Two guys having contrasting fortunes in this tournament. But enough about that main event. We got three matches to go through first. Let's go on with our first one. Righty ho then, in the red corner, representing Shy Guy, we got the Blitz type Patty Cephalosaurus, so you know what that means. We're gonna be seeing some big Blitz rushing hits. <laughs> well, actually, first, we're gonna see a terrain hit, because we are on the sunset field. And that favours Futuristic, because in the blue corner for Futuristic, we got Baryonyx, Super Baryonyx. So this Baryonyx will get the first hit in this match, and it will be a rock hit. And then we'll do the two blitz hits. So Shiger is going to have to wait there. <laughs> and actually, if things go a specific way, we'll see the Awaken mode straight away before a move even gets generated. Crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> um, yes, do be with me if my voice sounds a bit weird. I am battling a sore throat. It's not, it's not too bad. It's not as bad as the last one. <laughs> that one almost killed me. Right, let's see what we get here. Oh, it's a blitz hit from the Patty Cephalosaurus. Uh, Awake the mode on free, by the way. Ooh, didn't get the hit that time. So after everything's said and done, it is Shy Guy in the lead after that big blitz hit. Ooh, the Futuristic gets the next shot in the match. Oh, hello, we've got some Aqua Javelin action. Is this going to be curtains to Patty Cephalosaurus? It might be. And it is! So futuristic, quick as a wink, 1-0. Right, up next for Shy Guy, we've got the Blitz type Sorolophus. Well, you know the deal. Two scissors, hits, and we'll see if he gets them. Now, what's interesting here is if he gets the first one, or he gets hit, the Awaken mode will activate on the Baryonyx. And the only hit he'll get is a rock hit, but the Hydro Cutter has been triggered, so. An awakened hit from Baryonyx, and Futuristic could find themselves 2-0 up. Ooh, the big Hydro Cutter. Yum. Elementor, use your... But we've got to go for that scissors hit. I don't know why I got carried away there, but oh, the Sauronophus gets the hit. It's, okay, what's this? Nature's Blessing. Technique boost activating there. Good hit there from Shy Guy, even if it did maybe waste the Blitz hit. Because of the awakening mode of the Barry. Ooh, but Baryonyx does get a crit. Futuristic get, you know, getting more hits in this match. But Shy Guy is getting some good hits with the Blitz. Chris. Right, that is going to be curtains for Baryonyx. But it definitely did its work. Right, coming in next for Futuristic, we have got the Super Sychenia. Awaken mode on free, like the Baryonyx. It does have tight disadvantage against the Rolf, so it could be a problem. That could be a way to, for Shy Guy to get back in this contest. Because Futuristic does have a good lead. <sighs> Ooh, going for another crit. Ooh, but doesn't get it that time. Is that going to be curtains for Sorolophus? Okay, it's not. Right, that's one. Oh, our tide's gonna do it though, and down goes Sorolophus. Right, coming in third for Shy Guy, we have got the Blitz type Edmontonia. While they have been getting some good hits for the Blitz type, they're not getting many other hits in this match. 
But you know the deal. Two scissors is. So let's see if they get any either of them. If they can get both, they'll be right back in this contest. Ooh, there's one. A good crit there. Right, that's twice. So we will see some awakening action from the side chain here as well, mind. Okay, there's a tie. Okay, good t good outcome there for Shy Kai. Oh, that's not though. That's a crit from Saichenia. And it's going to be awakening time. So a golden opportunity here for Futuristic to get the bonus point win. Which will put them top, I believe. Oh, but he doesn't get it. Massive hit from Shy Guy. Ooh, hello, what's this? An Earth Barrier, that could be crucial. That means Futuristic will have to get two hits to win this match. Well, to get the bonus point win anyway. There's one, that, go, that gets rid of the Earth Barrier. Oh, hello, what we got here? Oh, it's a Giga Rock Hammer. That might put Edmontonia in range of being killed by a Titan, and it won't. Can Futuristic get this bonus point win? Oh, look at that. The answer to that is no. And it is going to be Futuristic's victory. I mean, we can skip this because it doesn't matter. <laughs> the Edmontonia just randomly gained a bit of health. It happens. But yeah, it is Futuristic's win. They will not get the bonus point win because the Sychenia did die. But they'll get the win nonetheless. Oh. Oops. Um. Uh. I'll just botch this. I don't care. Uh, there. <laughs> this is taking longer than I needed it to. But it doesn't matter. Edmond Tony's dead. We know the outcome. And Futuristic goes 3 1 in their debut. Not bad. Not bad. Right, on to match number two. Okie dokie, in the red corner. For Drogon, we have got Gygus, and this is a good field if you're Drogon, with terrain advantage. <coughs> terrain advantage could be a good factor in this match for Drogon, yeah? Now, a bonus point win for Drogon will put them top of this group, above Futurista. Oh, oh, hang on a minute, I forgot. Freaking Tanka got a fire type in first as well. So you know what that means, don't you? No terrain advantages, because they'll cancel each other out. Hmm. This is going to be an interesting match. To be honest, I feel both of these guys will get out of this group. That's my prediction. I'll probably, probably be miles wrong, and they'll both finish in the bottom two, but here we go. <laughs> Okay, but it is Simon Tyrannus getting that first shot of the match. Ooh, is a crit. Boosh. Good start from Tenka. Picking up where they left off against... Against Futuristic. Ooh, that's a tie. No heat eruption though, but ties do favour the Simon Tyrannus. This has been a good start from Tenka. Ooh, but Drogon responds with their first shot of the match. And it's a burning dash, so it's going to be a big shot. A no flare sword, though. But Drogon pretty much levelling things up with that burning dash. And getting the crit on the board. A move block coming in, courtesy of the Trodons. I think this move block might be Leafa, and it is. So Simon Tyrannus going down despite the good start from Tenka. Right, coming in next for Tenka, we got Megalosaurus. <laughs> Can Megalosaurus pick up with a Simon Tyrannus left off? Get some hits on the board, take out this guy just quick. Or can Drogon extend their now established lead? Ooh, that's a tie, but heat eruption's gone, so <laughs> Ty's probably helped Drogon now, given that he's in the lead. 
of the ties are wearing the Geigers down. The third tie, is that going to be curtain for Geigers? Nope. But look at the health being chipped away from Megalosaurus. Okay, there it is. Geigers finally going down and taking the leveling things up. Those ties did do some damage to the Meg. For Munchingen. Right, coming in next for Drogon, we've got Eoraptor. Who will it transform into? That could be a pivotal factor in this matchup. Who is Megaraptor? Seeker to kill you. Megaraptor. And that means that it is going to have Sonic Blast. Which is gonna be, could be a big factor in this matchup because ties will definitely favour Drogon now. And well, he will, he will certainly get Sonic Blast off because Eorop has got like absurd technique. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a Cret. Gonna get the, uh, the, I think it's Defense Boost, isn't it? Yeah. Defense Boost going there. Ooh, but Megalosaurus gets a big crit. That's going to be a big crit because that's a crit block as well. And a tie bomb coming. But like I said, with the Sonic Blast, tie, ties will favour the Eoraptor more. So I don't know if that's really good for Tenga, but what it does do is force the Megalosaurus to go rock. And the Megaraptor does too. And even though the Sonic Blast move is removed, he still gets it off. <laughs> That's nuts, man. And that Sonic Blast is in fact lethal for Megalosaurus and Drogon extending his lead. Right, coming in third for Tenka, we have got a Triceratops, a Super Triceratops. Awaken mode on three. Now, if the Tenkan kill the Eoraptor quick, Spinosaurus comes in next. If they can kill Eoraptor without using the Awaken mode, I think Tenkan can still win this match. But the key is getting hits on this Eoraptor. And well, there's one. Because we saw in the previous match that involved Drogon, that light recovery will heal an arse ton of health. Tie, but that's Sonic Blast. The blunder effect of the Eoraptor coming into play as well. Nullifying that rock move. And a Sonic Blast is really good for Drogon because it'll speed up the Awakened hit. The, the amount of time the Awakened mode gets to activate. Like I said, if Eoraptor survives till the Awakened mode for the Triceratops, then yeah, Drogon's in a really strong position. Oh, but it is Eoraptor going down. Tanker's still in this match. Right, coming in third for Drogon, we have got a Spinosaurus. Seems to be a mainstay in their teams in my tournament. They always seem to use it. We haven't seen too much of it, to be honest. Because all of Drogon's wins have been bonus point wins. Whereas... Their one loss against Lad, the Spinosaurus, I don't think, they think got a couple of hits, but yeah, if I remember correctly, it got like a few hits. And then everyone's like, oh god, Lad's gonna lose. But here it comes, here comes the big moment in this match, the awaken mode. A crit here ends this match. Okay, so it won't be a crit there. But it is a tie, so that gives Tanker another opportunity, and now any hit will probably be lethal. That's another hit. A tie will do it for Tanker. Oh, but Drogon gets a crucial hit on the board. That could be a massive hit. Tech boost coming in here. No Aqua Javelin. And look at this. We are level pecking. Oh, but I think it's Tanker's victory. Only just. And Tanker gets the win. Coming from behind to beat Drogon. But Drogon will get the losing bonus point. But it is Tenka's victory. And that will put them 
above futuristic, in fact, by virtue of the fact that they beat them. At least I think it will. I have to double check the table. But we'll look at the table at the end of the session. Right, on to match number three. Right then, in the red court, for Ultra Lord, we have got Alpha Guanadon. Ultra Lord currently sitting at 2 and 1 in this tournament. Bing, bing. <laughs> Another combatant and good, and they will get terrain advantage in this match. We are on the medal field. Right, in the blue corner for the Pivar, we have got Starachosaurus. Pivar still searching for their first win, but they have picked up a few losing bonus points. So, while they have lost their first three matches, they, it's not like they've been absolutely battered in them. You know, they have been narrow defeats. Can they get over the line this time? A win here would really get them back in this group stage. But first things first, we've got to do terrain advantage. Not much damage there. Ooh, but Ultra Lord getting a crit. That's not the start you want if you're Piva. Oh, I forgot. Is this crit? Rocks. Oh, I think I got it. Hey, we did it! Dino Force! Spitties! Big hit from the Iguanodon. And that's another hit. Is it going to be deja vu for Piva? I just can't seem to get a hit at the minute. This Iguanodon is all over him. And yeah, down goes the Stratosaurus. Right, coming in next for Piva, we've got Majungasaurus. The regular Majungasaurus. Well, it's got type advantage, so if Piva can get some quick hits here. They can take that. They can take that iguanodon down in a flash, but they just gotta get hits. And so far, they've got no hits, not even the tie. Oh, it's another crit. This isn't good. Another Dino Force. Oh, that's right. I remember in Ultra Lord's previous match, they botched this move, didn't I? But it didn't change the fact that Ultra Lord won anyway. Well, no mistakes this time. Mimis. Morenosaurus. I think that's how you say it. Oh, look at that. I need freaking poison debt. This is overkill, man. No. Come on, man, the regenerator. We had some crappy matches so far. Well, you got to botch it with this one-sided massacre. Okay, there's a first hit of the match. It's a Venom fan. Gonna give a Guanadon a taste of his own poison. Let's see how he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> Double poison. Ooh, hello. Another hit from Piva. Piva finally getting some hits in this match. Now, can they take out the Iguanodon here? Yes, they can. Oh, no, they can't. It's a Dino Suffer. <laughs> always always catches me by, by surprise, that move. But at least Pivar's getting some hits and striking back. The tie. Ooh, hello. We got a Sonic Blast. And that Sonic Blast will down the Iguanodon. This is much more like it from Pivar. Now, a defeat for Pivar, given the losing bonus points they've got so far, wouldn't mathematically put them out of contention for the knockout rounds, but it would probably leave them needing to win their last three matches and then have other results go their way. Right, coming in next for Ultra Lord, we've got Super Majungasaurus, Awaken Mode on 3. At least I think it is. I hope it is. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a tie. No Sonic Blast this time. That's another tie, and that is going to be curtains for the Majungasaurus on the right. Right, coming in third for Pivar, we have got Satiosaurus. Now, it has a very similar move set and uh, idea, similar to that of Ultima Dino King's Satiosaurus. And can this Satiosaurus get Pivar back in this contest? Now, he's got the Awaken mode of the Majungasaurus to take into account here. But if he can kill it quick, without needing. without. Oh, hang on. That's a crit. That's exactly what Pivar needs. Now, I was saying, if he it, if it can kill this Majungasaurus before he gets the chance to do the Awaken hit, he's on, and well, that's once. Any hit now will do it. And there's another crit. And all of a sudden. Well, Ultra Lord had a very ultra strong start, but it is Pivar coming right back in this contest. <laughs> the random number generator, listen to me. <laughs> right, coming in third for Ultra Lord, we got Deinonychus, and is it all going wrong for them? I mean, it's a bit early to say that, because we are pretty much level. <laughs> and uh, Pivar has been playing catch up this whole match. But let's see how this matchup plays out now. Oh, there's another crit! Three crits in a row! The Satiosaurus is cleaning house with a tragic sphere. And is this going to be a tragic ending for Ultra Lord? No! We got that crit from the Deinonychus. A recovery coming as well. Crucial hit from Ultra Lord. And that, that recovery does put Deinonychus above. Oh, actually, it fully heals it. A double recovery there. Light recovery and recovery coming into play. And that puts Ultra Lord back in the lead. Oh, oh, here comes another tragic sphere. <laughs> Gonna wipe out that health. Boosh. And well, we're back where we started. And this hit should secure the losing bonus point for Piva, should they still lose. But look at this. They've come right back into this contest and Ultra Lord doesn't know what's hit them. And in fact, because of the softening beam's effect, a tie will be lethal here. Oh, is that going to do it? That's going to do it. Satiosaurus did get below half HP, so Ultra Lord will claim a losing bonus point. But it is the Pivas victory. They finally get their first win of the tournament. And a quite impressive comeback, to be honest, because they look dead and buried when our Iguanodon was getting hit. But Ultra Lord, well, they would have really kicked themselves if they didn't get that losing bonus point. Well, they should be kicking themselves anyway. They had a massive lead. But that's what can happen in these tournaments. It's never over till it's over. Now then, on to our main event of this session, which I think is going to be very, very close. Well, this should be a fun main event, shouldn't it? Right, in the red corner for Moon, we have got Super Minus. Well, Moon, one of two combatants in this entire tournament, still yet to register a point in the group stage. Can that change today? In the blue corner for the Mad Lad, we have got Eucentrosaurus and oh my goodness. Well, gonna get terrain advantage already. <laughs> so Lad's gonna get the first hit and it's gonna be a crit. Not ideal for Moon. But Lad, contrasting fortunes between these two lads, enjoying a good tournament so far. Two, two and one. A win here will put them in the upper echelons of Group G. But let's see how this match plays out. As I said, very similar teams. I do think this matchup is key. And because of the type advantage and, well, the terrain advantage that Lad has, I do think it's going to be Lad's victory. Because both of these guys got Earth types in second, and both of them got Kark in third. 
that this is the big difference between these two teams. is Sukumimus and Eucentosaurus. But a good hit there from Moon. And another hit on the board. This is a much better showing so far. But yeah, look at that. Tight disadvantage, minimal damage. But at least he's getting hits. Ooh, but there's a hit from Lad. It's a Dino Yeetage. A defense boost coming in as well. I don't think that's going to help at this point. Because you sent Resorius is on such low health. But yeah, look at that. One hit. Two hits. Super Minus is on that much health. Like, I think Moon's got like four hits. That's the difference. The type advantage. And yeah, look at that. You've sent Rosaurus down in the Sukumimus. But to be fair, Sukumimus did hold its own and did do well. And when um, Polar Ankylosaurus comes in, all it needs is a hit and he'll kill the sent Rosaurus. And he has type advantage as well, so... I think Lad has the lead, but if you're Moon, you're relatively satisfied with that outcome. Of course... All this applies only if Moon gets the next hit here. <laughs> if Lad keeps getting hits, then he's going to pull away. But it's been an even contest so far. Oh, well. Okay, that's not the worst case scenario. Because, yes, it's a Thunder Driver. But, the type of advantage is going to limit the damage here. But it is a hit from Lad. Yeah, not much damage done there. For a move of Thunder Driver's strength, anyway. It's a tie. Oh my god, it still didn't kill it. Okay, but this tie will do it. But Ankylosaurus did take a bit of, a lot of damage there. Lost over half its health. Right, coming in next for Lad, we've got Polar Canthus. Polar Canthus has been a very solid acquisition for this the lad so far this tournament. Very impressive against Drogon, if I remember correctly. And was the main reason that lad won that match. Ooh, but that's a big shot from Moon. Massive hit. That's what he needed. Oh, that's a tie. Another tie. Oof, this is this is really tight. Ooh, but it is Lad that gets that crucial hit, taking out the Ankylosaurus and retaining his lead. Right, coming in third for Moon, we have got Kakuodontosaurus. Actually, both of these two have very similar move sets for Kark as well. So this could go right down to the wire. Ooh, that's a fire cannon. And he's going to get the attack boost going as well, which, again, in such a tight matchup, that can make the difference. Big hit from Moon, then. That's going to down the Polar Canthus. And with everything said and done, we are level. It all comes down to which Kark wants it more. Right, coming in third for Lad, we've got Kakarid on the source. And actually, they're both lethal type as well. Just... Bear that in mind, too. <laughs> they both got fire cannon. This is good. This could honestly end in a draw. Anything can happen here. Oh, but it's Lad getting the big crit. And fire cannon from Lad's cart is going to do a lot of damage. Boosh. Oh, wow, well, there's the uh, losing bonus point secured, and that elemental power could be crucial here. Oh, that's a tie. Can Lad get the win? That's another tie. Oh, that's a third tie. Is Moon going to be pointless again? Oh, I think that's going to do it. That's going to do it. 
in his lad's victory. Unfortunately for Moon, they just didn't do enough to get the losing bonus point. And they sink to 0-4, but it is lad's victory. And yeah, that first matchup between Suko and New Centro, that was the difference. Once lad got that lead, he kept the lead for the entire match and got the win. That's going to end round four for this group. So we'll have a look at the table and we'll end the session. Right, that is how Group G looks, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Futuristic sitting up top with three wins, three bonus points, 12 points. And we have Drogon in second place despite only two wins. But they did, they have got a massive four bonus points. They've gotten a bonus point in every match so far. Then we have Tenka in third, above Lad by virtue of the head-to-head -head between the two. Then we have Lad on nine points. Ultra Lord on eight points. Shy Guy on six, Pivar finally getting their first win on five points, and poor old Moon, still pointless, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, they're just done. I just cannot see them getting at the group. And to be honest, I I think they're probably going to finish bottom of this group. The only, the only hope for them would be, can they at least get a win in this tournament and get off the mark? Because I would honestly hate for them to finish this tournament on zero, but if it happens, it happens. Right, that's going to end the session here, so I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, ta-ta!